Successor to the GLK, the Mercedes-Benz GLC is an SUV based on the C-Class saloon. Two iterations in and the fight is taken directly to competitors BMW with the X3, Audi with the Q3 and Volvo with the XC60. Tell me a joke. Sorry, my engineers were Germans. Prices for the GLC start at €48,000 for the 200 diesel, which is €280 Euro tax and it's starting at €65,000 for the GLC 300 petrol, which is €570 Euro tax. It's also got a 5-star NCAP rating, and some of the safety assist features can be accessed through the MBUX menu, where you can turn them on or off, some of which you will probably want to keep off. Lane assist and start-stop, for example, which require updating at the beginning of every single journey. You've seen the exterior, now let's take a quick tour of the interior of the Mercedes-Benz GLC. This interior trim in the GLC it looks so good now um, it doesn't have the two panels side by side that are integrated it has this like floating device which is um, similar to the older versions of some of the Mercedes but um, one of the things I love is just the, how this clicks in it's great it's just so satisfying and the air conditioning system works really well also You've got the speed of the fan here, and then the adjustments that they just pop up on the screen as you need them. One thing about um, when you're using cables, you've got a USB adapter here, and this goes through the armrest like so. Now it's soft touch material so that when you close it, it kind of sits in the middle. It does close, trust me. Where it sits in the middle like that, and then you've got your phone and you usually place your phone here but it tends to like drag over the haptic feedback pad a little bit which is a bit frustrating um, but you kind of you just kind of work around it I mean it's not it's not so bad it's not the worst thing in the world um, but just a, bit, a little bit of a design thing that Merck could do a bit more work on um, the cup holders unfortunately do end up being used for the keys now there is a spot back here I'm supposed to use but humans being humans just tend to kind of dump it there It'd be nice to have uh, a key slot similar to the Skoda's the way they have it which is great so here we have um, you know, your touchpad here on the steering wheel which is great you've got access to all of the information within I love using these so when you reset it you get the distance you've traveled, the average mileage consumption, your average speed, how many hours you've been driving. This is the last journey it was on. On the motorway, it averaged 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which doesn't sound too bad. After a week's worth of using the car, you can see here, this is what has been consumed as well. The steering wheel has this absolutely gorgeous like really really gorgeous um, leather covering the stalks that they've been using for the gear selector these need to be updated they feel a little bit too flimsy to be honest and then you've got the you've got your wipers here as well they just feel a little bit flimsy for a for a Merc they work extremely well they're perfectly fine you've got this keyless start to be honest I would prefer keyless entry over keyless start keyless start is is it's only fine I usually have to go finding it whether it's on this side this side here or sometimes it's down here but keyless entry is much more worth my money on the options list just generally all around you've got excellent quality materials it's what makes the cabin such a delightful place to be in the engine is a little bit coarse so if you can I'd option the Burmester stereo I am um, I highly recommend them they're absolutely beautiful to listen to but that, that, this engine in the 220D, it's just a little bit coarse when pushed. Uh, you've got your other options here, the, the door opening system, the window opening are lovely, and, but you've got these gorgeous materials that you're going to be resting your elbow and arm against. Excellent cubby hole space, front and back. And then there's just a huge amount of space, even though it's based on the C-Class, there's definitely more space in the rear here because this is what you've got the extra body um, but yeah, easy fold, fold seats, which is fantastic from the boot. 
and then the tailgate opening is a spec worth paying for. You've also got a couple of air vents back here and a small transmission tunnel hump for the third passenger. But all in all, it's a very, very well specced, beautiful car. Very nice to drive, incredibly uh, good in the mid ranges. But yeah, uh, it's a great cabin. Merck are doing great cabins, great styling on the exterior. Just a few li little niggly bits and pieces, but they're not the worst in the world. Uh, very good car overall, expensive, but that's what you're expecting with Mercedes. The Mercedes GLC is mainly about comfort. From the optional air body control to the energizing pack, it wants to get you to your destination in the most relaxed state you can be. The tailgate pack is invaluable if you use the boot space often. The rear seats fold flat quickly and easily with the flick of a button from the boot and live information from the traffic works brilliantly. The touchscreen, however, in the MBUX isn't integrated in this GLC, which is similar to the previous models of in-car entertainment available on Mercedes. It's floating out from the dash. In the most up-to-date versions, you get a flat, integrated touchscreen with a choice of dimensions. Overall, the Mercedes-Benz GLC is a great package. Where the BMW brings driving dynamics, Audi the style and Volvo the image, the GLC brings comfort, usability and presence.